Welcome to our champion data guide for the best entry-level helmet of 2021. When you first start riding, one of the most important decisions is what helmet to start off with. And things get even more difficult when you want to make sure that you're actually picking up a quality lid that will perform and make your money worthwhile. This is why we've collected our top beginner helmets and given them to our test rider to measure with our instruments. He's come back with loads of interesting data for noise, ventilation, and more. So stay tuned to find out what he came back with. Sebastian from Champion Helmets here, and just as there is a large range of helmets available in the premium segment, there are plenty to choose from in the beginner end of the market. And what do we mean by beginner end? We mean that all the helmets in our main lineup are coming in under the 300 euro or 360 US dollar price point. So while this does mean you may have to pay a little more, we made this decision since you actually get a large number of helmets that perform well in the 200 to 300 euro range. So to find out what each helmet is offering in terms of performance, we've given the HJC i70, AGV K3SV, Shark Squall 2.2, Scorpion XO 1400 Air, and the HJC i70 to our test rider to take out on the road with our measuring instruments. We've also tested more helmets to check out our results, which we'll also be including, so stick around as we bring you the data. As we head into our lineup, don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date on our latest champion data reviews and road tests where we take helmets out on the road, measure their performance, and bring you the facts. Before we get to testing, we'll just cover how we set our test up. On the left, we have the helmet's internal temperature in degrees Celsius from a thermometer placed between the helmet liner and EPS. In the middle, we have our decibel meter showing the helmet's internal noise level from a microphone placed near our rider's ear. On the right, we have a telephone showing the day's average airspeed on the helmet from a bike-mounted anemometer. Lastly, on the dash, we have our rider's speed and the day's exterior temperature. All of our tests were performed on long stretches of highway at 130 km per hour, and we took averages over time. First off, let's take a look at what these helmets are made of. We ranked our helmets according to our matrix, which is broken down according to the number of outer shell sizes, since this gives you a more proportional fit, and outer shell material, since this also has a major impact on weight. Starting with the HAC F70, the helmet is coming composed of fiberglass in two outer shell sizes, which means it earns three stars. And it's even available in a carbon fiber version as well for those who want to really cut down on weight. The K3SV and Squall 2.2 are coming in two outer shell sizes and are composed of a polycarbonate composite, earning them two and a half stars per material. The Scorpion XO 1400 Air is also composed of fiberglass, but in three outer shell sizes, which earns it three and a half stars. Lastly, we have the HJC i70, which is coming constructed from polycarbonate, but in two outer shell sizes, which earns it two and a half stars. So we already have an interesting set of results with the XO 1400 Air in the lead. So we'll just have to see if the weight category can shake things up a little bit more. Next up, we come to the weight category, which is also important since not only does it follow from the materials used, but it can also impact safety and comfort. We once more used our rating matrix for this category with different bands to help us rank our helmets. To start off with, we definitely have a wide range in results, though most are coming in at around the 1500 gram mark. The helmets coming in at this point are mainly the Shark Squall 2.2, HJCI 70, and the AGV K3SV. Of these, the Shark Squall 2.2 earns 4 stars, and the others earn 4 as well. Our lightest helmets for this lineup were the HJC F70 at 1,450 grams, earning it 4 stars, and the Scorpion XO 1400 Air at 1,450 grams, which shows how much of a difference fiberglass can make. So some very interesting results, but let's see how the helmets do in terms of their face shields before moving on to the road. Now we come to the visor, which is another area where we'll see some shakeups, since you can expect a wide range of options in the entry-level segment. So to help us see how many stars each helmet earns, we've once more used our ranking matrix with different aspects of the visor, such as whether the pin lock is included in the box, if there is a drop-down sun visor, and more to help determine how many stars they earn. As far as our helmets, we have most of our top contenders coming in being pin lock prepared with the insert in the box and even a drop-down sun visor thrown in for convenience. So they all actually earn four stars. Though the one exception here in our Overall lineup is the Icon Air Flight, which is not pinlock prepared. Nonetheless, there are some helmets here that do stand out more and deserve a little bit more mention. Though the F70 does score well here and offers a fantastic field of view, the visor is actually not quick release and you need a screwdriver to swap it out. In addition to this, the AGV helmet's visor mechanism is not as robust as our other contenders here today as well, which is a second caveat to keep in mind. 
nonetheless, you are already getting a good level of value here compared to some of our lower priced runner ups. So another intriguing set of results here, though these Scorpion and Shark do offer you that nice quick change visor. But face shields don't tell us the whole story, which means that the time has come for us to give the helmets to our test rider and head out on the road to see how they perform for noise, ventilation, and more. Now we come to the most interesting part of our road test where we actually get to see how our helmets perform out on the road once measured with our various sensors. Starting with noise, we ranked our helmets according to our matrix with its own set of bands to see how quiet each helmet is. Though a difference of one decibel here may not seem like much, at these higher ranges, it does actually make a noticeable difference. As far as our test conditions, all our helmets were tested with a day's airspeed between 115 to 130 km per hour, which means we have a very clean set of data, which is excellent. Most of our helmets for today did come in at the louder end of the spectrum, but this is to be expected considering they're not going to be bringing top-level sport touring noise isolation. As such, we have the HJC F70 and AGV K3SV coming in at a noisy 105 decibels, though the Icon Airflight actually came in the loudest at 110. However, our quietest helmets for today's lineup were both the Shark and Scorpion at 100 decibels, earning themselves 3.5 and 4 stars. Though coming in the quietest overall, we have the i70 at 99 decibels, and this was a truly unexpected result, and actually places the i70 as another one of our quietest helmets tested out on the road, which earns it 4.5 stars. But before we jump into comfort and features, let's see how these helmets do for their ventilation. Next up for airflow, we also have a very interesting set of results. In this section, we also made sure to see how many stars our helmets earned according to our ranking matrix, with different bands again depending on the interior and exterior temperature difference. Most of our helmets actually did fairly well, with the Nolan N87 Plus being 2 degrees hotter to the outside, earning them 3 stars. Nonetheless, our coolest helmets for the day actually ended up being the i70 and 1400 Air, showing their strong ventilation systems. Either way, this earns these helmets 4 stars for airflow. But even in the entry level segment, the big question is, how will they do for comfort? As far as the helmet's comfort, we have an understandably lower set of scores since we're often looking at simpler liners. But quite a bit of variation is still worth keeping in mind with these helmets. As far as our rankings for this segment, we rely on our test driver's 15 plus years of riding experience to inform us on how the helmet does on aspects that don't necessarily fit into a matrix such as comfort, bulkiness, or stability, and more. In the end, we have the HJC i70 actually making up the rear with 1.5 stars for its much more basic liner. Above the i70, though, we have the Shark Squall 2.2 and the HJC F70 at 2.5 stars, since they did bring a bit more quality feel to them. Though the AGV K3SV came out on top with 3.5 stars for its great dry comfort fabric interior, the N87 Plus runner-up also stands out. The main reason for this is that its interior is actually adjustable, which means that you can always get the right fit, and this is a great extra feature. With our data almost completely collected, we have one more category to cover, features. So let's see how these helmets do and what they're offering. Finally, we come to features, which is where we take a look at what extra functions and aspects manufacturers have actually worked into their helmets. And just because these are sub 300 euro options doesn't mean we don't have some interesting talking points. But first, we ranked our helmets in this category according to our rating matrix once more, which is composed of key features that riders frequently ask us about that aren't always captured by our matrices. These include aspects such as speaker pockets, emergency quick release, adjustable liners, and extra safety offerings. Overall, most of our helmets are coming in at around the 2-3 to three star mark, with the F70 offering the most thanks to its HJC Smart preparation, emergency quick release cheek pads, and additional wind tunnel testing. Nonetheless, the Shark Squall 2.2 does still bring a great extra feature with its integrated LED lighting. This means Shark have added additional rechargeable lights along the top and back of the helmet to improve your visibility while riding in poor lighting conditions, so this is a great extra feature. Though keep in mind, this is not always legal in all countries. But what can we tell when we take a look at the big picture with these helmets all put side by side? With our data collected and our results catalogued, let's see how all our helmets do together. So, so far we have a very interesting picture with a wide range of results across each price point. The F70 does come in as a top helmet as far as specs, though it did end up quite noisy like a number of our other helmets today. At that same price point, we have the XO1400 Air with a much stronger performance, especially out on the road. This just leaves the HJC i70, which also did quite well overall, though it was not particularly comfortable. As far as the K3SV, it also brought a surprisingly strong level of specs, 
but it was also noisy, just like the F70 when tested out on the road. But even though we know how these helmets rank, we still need to take their price into account for their final scores to really get a good idea of how much you're getting for your helmet. Though we have tested out a number of sub 300 euro helmets, they are still offering different levels of performance at different prices. So it is important to factor this in. This means that we have ranked our helmets according to their average star and euro per star values individually, and with our ranking formula, assign them a price quality star bonus. So in fifth place, we have the XO520 Air with an average of 3.1, earning a bonus of 1.7. We then have the HTC i70 with an average of 3.1, tied with the Shark Squall 2.2 with 3.1 stars, earning them a bonus of 2.7. We have the AGV K3 SV in second place, earning 3.14 stars on average, with a bonus of 3.3 stars. Last, we have the Scorpion XO1400 Air on top with an average of 3.5 stars, earning itself a tidy bonus of 3.8 stars. With all our rankings in and the helmet prices taken into account, we can finally see what the best entry-level helmet is for 2021. In fifth, we once more have the HJC F70 with a final score of 6.9 out of 13 euros per star. In fourth, we then have the HJC i70 with a score of 7 of 10 at 9 euros per star. Just above the Scorpion is the Shark Squall 2.2 with a score of 7.1 at 11 euros per star, which means you have a great value for money there. This means that we only have two helmets left, so let's see which comes out as the best starter helmet for 2021, the AGV or the Scorpion. In second place, we have the AGV K3 SV with a score of 7.2 at 10 euros per star, which leaves first place going to the Scorpion XO 1400 Air, thanks to its final score of 7.8 at 12 euros per star. Though it does come in at the very top of the entry range, it performs very well, is made of fiberglass, and offers a great level of features, so it was a very close race, but this helmet did eke out its final lead. But we've still seen plenty of interesting data here today, which gives a better idea of how these helmets do out on the road in the real world. And for more information, you can always check out our individual helmet reviews of each of these helmets. There we have it. We now have our answer for the best entry-level helmet of 2021. Though each of these options offers a strong level of beginner-friendly features and prices, there could only be one in the end. If you liked the video, then make sure to subscribe to keep up to date on more champion reviews and road tests like these, and let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, don't forget that we have our helmet bundle deals on our site, where you can pick up a discount advisor or communication system as well. I'm Sebastian from Champion Helmets, and see you next time.